What's up and welcome to the Macro Master How to Track When You Are Going Out to Eat. This is a highly requested training and I'm so excited to go through this with you because it's going to transform what goes on when you go out to eat or when you're on the go. So let's jump into it. So starting off, the outline or the key points that we're going to go through are going to be expectations, how to lose the all or nothing mindset. I'm going to kind of talk through what that looks like and where it's probably occurring in your own journey, as well as planning ahead, how to estimate portion sizes, how to track it in action. I'm going to give you an actual example of how I do this and then some takeaways and common mistakes so that you can avoid those. So jumping into it, expectations. I want you to know that this is not that serious. So whenever I talk about the all or nothing mentality, what typically happens, and you can tell me if this is right or wrong, is that we will go out to eat, we'll either look through the menu or order what we normally do, and we'll either not be in the habit of tracking, so we get to the end of that meal and we're like, shit, I forgot to track that meal, fuck it, I'm not gonna track it, right? And that happens so often, so, so often. So we end up having Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that are not fully tracked. Now, what does this do for our journey? All this does for our journey is leave out all of those data points that could be helping us to move forward. So if you are stuck right now, you're not losing the weight, or you're just really confused and just like, man, I don't know what's going on. It's probably the not tracking when you're out to eat or the going into that all or nothing mindset. So where this happened for myself, because this is something I really struggled with too, is I had this obsession with Texas Roadhouse. We would go out to the Roadhouse and I had this entire, my mouth is like watering thinking about it. <laughs> I had this entire like full course meal that I would get every single time that I went there, right? I would get the appetizer, I would eat all the rolls, there would be multiple baskets of rolls sent our way, extra butter, right? All the good stuff. I would get the onion blossom, then I'd get a ribeye, loaded baked potato, I would get a side salad with the dressing and all of that good stuff. And then if I still thought I had room, I would get a dessert. Right. So you can see this entire meal, if you were to actually track this, would a lot to more than what my calories were for that entire day. So it'd be like 2000 calories. Right. And what would happen is I would see that because there was a time where I did finally track all of this entire meal that I would normally get. And I was appalled. I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe that I am eating that many calories in one sitting. And I would feel extremely shameful. And what ended up happening is every time I would go out to eat, I would avoid tracking. Now, what happened whenever I did that is that I would not reach my goals. I would, it would take me forever until I would start tracking those weekend meals or those restaurant meals. So what ended up happening is I got over, I call this the cheat meal mentality. Because what was happening is I was so good and strict on myself throughout the week that I thought I deserved a cheat meal. And that cheat meal was that Texas Roadhouse meal. And what would happen is even though I wasn't tracking it, my calories were so high that it would take me out of a calorie deficit throughout the week. So no matter how much I restricted myself, no matter how low calories I ate throughout the week, I would always end up eating even more on the weekends, which would offset my deficit and keep me either in maintenance or sometimes I would even gain weight after the weekend and be just extremely upset on Monday. So I tell you this story to help you to avoid this because the sooner at the the most beginning of your journey that you can make this change and flip the switch for your mindset here and start just tracking those out to eat meals, the happier and faster you will get to your results. So the next step here is just guesstimating. So you're never going to be spot on with restaurant meals because the biggest thing here is the cook is going to be different every single time you go. You might be going to different restaurants. It's never going to be spot on. And sometimes some restaurants don't even have their menu in MyFitnessPal or in our tracking app. So I want you to guess it. I don't want you to put nothing in there because action is going to beat the effort mode mentality every time. <laughs> so putting something in there is going to be your best guess. And I will show you in our example of how to guesstimate or get as close as possible. So the first thing that you want to do before you even go to the restaurant is plan it out. So I want you to choose a sensible meal. Now, the first thing here is I would suggest actually getting what you normally do at the restaurant and tracking it because I want you to see what is in that meal. And for most people, this is going to really shock you. It's going to really shock you because you're going to 
see how many calories are actually in this meal, but I need you to be self-aware and I need you to cultivate that like nutritional awareness. And that's the first thing. A lot of the times I do this with clients that go out drinking on the weekends. We just take one day and we track it like normal. Don't try to hit any certain numbers. I just want you to track it and really see what it looks like because that awareness, no matter how like shocking it might be, how many calories are in there, you might be pleasantly surprised. Maybe it's not as high as mine was, but you still need that awareness so you have some sort of baseline to go off of. And then the next time you go to eat, you're probably not going to get the same meal that you normally do. And there's nothing wrong with that. You are going to have to make changes to your nutrition to reach your goals. So it's kind of a given, right? <laughs> yes, it's going to be slightly different than your normal, but I want you to plan it out ahead of time the next time after you figure out how many calories are in that normal meal you get. And the next time you go, you're gonna have a better awareness of, okay, so I normally get the appetizer and the rolls. Maybe this time I can get like, half of the appetizer and maybe only eat one roll this time and let's see what that does to the calories this time around and plan that out. You're going to plug in the best match into your app. So whenever I go to show you what this looks like, that'll make more sense. So if there's no menu in the app, again, you're going to pick your best guess and it's going to be based on what comes up. I don't want you to overthink this because as soon as you overthink it, that's when you get out of the habit of doing this. I want you to just put in whatever comes up first that looks the best for you. And if you are over your calories, I want you to learn from it instead of ignoring it. A lot of the times what we'll see is way over my calories, I'll either delete it out, pretend it never happened, even though your body knows that it happened, or I'll just next time not even track it at all. And that is not the mindset that we want to be in. We're not giving up. We're not throwing in the towel just because something went over our goals. This is what this is the mentality that keeps most people stuck. And we're not going to let you do that. <laughs> so going into a a little bit of how to get an idea of what your portions are going to be here. Anytime that I get something like, let's say the steak, for example, what I'll use is my hand and I'll use this palm size portion. So you can see this little thing up here and it's the size of your palm. So I will use my palm and I will put it next to the steak on the plate and I will see how big is this steak and I will cut it to match the size of my palm. And that's going to be about four ounces worth of steak. So if I ordered a sirloin, I'm going to put in four ounces of sirloin into my app unless the restaurant, unless I order just like a, like, four ounce steak, which normally they don't have that. They have a six ounce, but for most people, four ounces is going to be the best. So you're going to cut that up and maybe save the rest for later. Right. And be okay with that too. Saving most of your meal for the lunch for the next day is going to be a really good habit to get into. Next servings of vegetables is going to be a fist, a cupped handful of carbs, and a thumb serving of fats. Now, this is going to help if the menu items that you're after are not on my fitness pal. And these are really great for any time that you don't have a food scale as well. Next, tracking alcohol. So I like to track alcohol as 25 grams of carbs for every 100 calorie drink that you have. So alcohol is not calorie free. It is very high calorie. And the best way to track this, because we don't actually track alcohol in our app, because it's not something that we recommend doing a lot of. It's not the best for your body. You already know this. But if you do have a drink and you have like, let's say a white claw, then go ahead and just type in carbs carbs into your app and then just set it for 25 servings of one carb and you should come up with 25 grams of carbs and 100 calories worth. If you still have questions on this, I have an entire video on tracking alcohol that we can get into later. So next, I'm going to show you an example using my fitness pal. So you're going to go into my fitness pal and I'm just going to show you the roadhouse version and then maybe a Mexican restaurant because this is one that I get questions on all the time. So whenever you go in to add your food, you can type in the restaurant. So we'll type in Texas roadhouse and then we can search for it. And you're going to see that a lot of these things, oops, sorry, a lot of these things come up and we can just pick from here or you type in Texas Roadhouse and you can type in sirloin like so. And you're going to see that the six ounce comes up like this. So if I pick that out and let's say that I didn't eat the full six ounces, let's say I did my portion size of my hand, then I'm going to put in four ounces here. So you can see 257 calories. It's got 18 fat, 21 grams of protein. And I would just add that in and you're going to do that for the entire meal. Now, okay. So Ariel, 
oh my gosh, I'm at this Mexican restaurant and nothing is coming up. Their menu's not on here. Guess what? Most restaurants that have similar foods are probably using the same ingredients. So even if they do not show up on MyFitnessPal, I can almost guarantee you that the food is almost the same. So if I were to type in, let's say that I got an enchilada or something, I'm just going to type in enchilada search this and you can see beef enchiladas right at the top here. So one enchilada, let's say that I got two of them like so, and something is going to come up. Just really don't overthink this. Just throw something in there that is going to be close. Beef enchilada, super easy. Chips and salsa or chips and queso is a big one. So chips and queso, just going to type that in. There's one from Moe's. There is salsa Rita's. Maybe I got it from Moe's, so I'm just going to click on this, one order's worth, and you can see how these calories do add up. This is why we got to be mindful, and this is why we've got to track these things. And so we just track it like that. Super easy. Just find something that is going to be close. Now let's do pizza, because pizza is one of my favorites. So most, most pizza places are going to be in here, but... My favorite to do is just put in like whatever pizza it is, what style it is. So pizza, you can do like East of Chicago. That's one of my favorites. Pizza from East of Chicago, pepperoni pizza, one slice of pizza. So you can see, just add that in. And even if I don't get East of Chicago and it's some like random pizza place and I can't find it on here, I'll just put in East Chicago. Just pick one and go with it. And you're going to find that by doing this, eventually you're going to get to the point where you're like, oh man, like these, these calories are really adding up. And it's usually on the weekends because we're out of our routine. That's when we go out to eat. That's when we get the pizza. And you're going to start realizing, hey, like I need to make a couple changes here. And that's where we come in to help you to make those changes. And it all starts with having that awareness and that nutritional awareness. So moving forward, the biggest takeaways and mistakes that I want you to think about, number one is, the number one mistake is just not tracking when it gets hard. We are not in the all or nothing mindset. We are getting away from that. So your new mantra is always something. So I don't care if it's completely wrong. Put something in for that restaurant meal. Put something in for that out to eat meal or that cookout, whatever it is, put something in. Get in the habit of putting this thing in. You're not going to be tracking forever. If you can give yourself six to 12 months of tracking consistently and hitting the weekends, I promise you that you will be at your goal by a year's time. The longer that it takes you and the more that you avoid tracking on weekends, the longer that that timeline gets. A year is going to be the absolute, absolute minimum, I promise. But that is a lot shorter than years and years of not reaching your goal and being really freaking frustrated. So I promise you, that new mantra, always something. Write that somewhere. Put that on your phone somewhere. Always something. Mistake number two is just feeling bad if you go over your macros. So this is going to happen the first couple of times that you track. There's nothing to feel guilty of. This is your journey, and this is all about that self-awareness. And also, it's not a competition to make your coach proud. We want to see you doing well, and that starts with having that self-awareness and being honest with yourself and just tracking it anyways. The number three mistake is trying this once and then never doing it again. So like I said, I had that shock, like, oh my God, the, this meal is way over my calories for the entire day. I already ate three meals before this. So now I'm like way over my calories. And there for a couple of weeks, I was like, oh my God, I'm so scared to track it. But the thing is that the, the switch that I had was, hey, this is a skill and it's only going to improve if I practice it. And my nutritional awareness got so much better from that. I started getting way better at choosing better options whenever I go out to eat. And then number four is purposely underestimating. So you are going to be flabbergasted when you see how high calorie those meals are at those restaurants. But I don't want you to let this scare you into giving up. It is just an opportunity to learn and being super honest with your tracking app is a must for that long-term health and that long-term um, growth that you are after. So finale, <laughs> hopefully all that made sense. If you have any questions, please, please let me know. Just DM me. Let me know what questions you have on that. And if you haven't already, DM me, join, and I'll send you the link to our Facebook community where we share more gu guides like this one to help you out along your journey. Or you can just click here if you have this document and it will send you to the group automatically. So I hope this helped and happy tracking.